You save all this money, and it goes poof. What can we do about it? What can we do? The military education is different than academic education. We're taught to make mistakes. You know, so every day I'd fly and we had to we had to kill the engine on our aircraft and crash. It's called auto rotation. I used to fly R twenty twos, and it's the scariest thing you've yeah. ever done. <laughs> but every aircraft we do, we I mean, I, fly, I was cross training all the aircraft. We always practice crashing because one day, as you know, you will crash. And you did crash. And I did crash three times. But if I didn't practice that, I'd be dead. So what happens to the average person in a financial crash, they don't know what to do. And right now, as you know, for the middle class of the world, we're in a crash. The purchasing power of the yen, the euro, the rupiah, all going down. And people are working harder and harder and harder. And the central banks of the world are printing more money. Interest rates, you know, Trump just told the Fed, don't you raise those interest rates. Well, that screws all the savers. Right. I was on CNN calling the crash of 2008. I said, Lehman's going down. You can check it out. I said to Wolf Blitzer, Lehman's going down. And he goes, oh. And he got all he got kind of flustered because they're not allowed to say stuff like that. Right. And we had Gene Chatsky, who represents Wall Street, you know, the, the, the mutual funds and 401k guys. She goes, oh. Can't they say don't that. want me to, they don't want what we know out there. So that's why fake is fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. How can you explain that to people? And then what do they need to know about fake assets to protect themselves, especially from this upcoming crash or crisis that's gonna happen? Can I give you a very simple? <laughs> Please. Okay. okay, this here is a balloon. <laughs> so in 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. So what did that mean? That meant the US government, the US Treasury, could now print money. So they, the U.S. Treasury would sell a bond to the Fed. Over here would be the Bank of England, Bank of Japan, ECB, and all this. The financial industry is two things, debt and taxes. Debt and taxes. And that's where fake starts. 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, and the U.S. dollar became debt. And we still tell kids to go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, and get out of debt, and invest in a well-diversified portfolio, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. That's not it. Now, who tells them to do that? That's the most ridiculous thing there is. The book starts and it says, line number one, saving money will make you rich. Yeah, it never will. You know that. Because they can print it. Why would you save it and why would you work for it if they can print it as faster than you can work for it and, and number two is they keep dropping the interest rates on it. And today in the world, America especially, you know, is this gap between the rich and everybody else. And I know the game of the rich. You know, my, my rich dad taught me, you know it because you're the banker. The game the bankers and the rich play is different than what they teach you in school. If you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Rich Dad's lesson number one, the rich don't work for money. Don't you touch that stuff. The people that are being screwed today are the poor middle class because they work for money. You know the banker friends, they're not working for money. They have money working for them. Yep. Right. Very big difference in mentality here. So we have, in America today, we have, you know, even Ray Dalio of Bridgewater, one of the biggest hedge fund guys in America, he's saying this gap between the rich and everybody else is too wide. Well, you could have seen that back in 1972. Because the moment you corrupt money, the very thing that everybody works for, saves, counts on, they were screwed anyway. And our school systems, fake money, fake t-shirts, fake assets, part of that same system. Government, education, Wall Street, or City of London. And you know, in, in uh, Paris today, they have the yellow jackets. Yeah, the What's going on right in now. America today are red for Ed. All these school teachers are putting on red t-shirts because they know they're being screwed. They're protesting and all this. Their pension plans have been sucked dry by Wall Street. And what do they do? They put hedge fund managers in to manage the pensions. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. You put a hedge fund guy in to manage 
the biggest pot of money called the school teachers, firefighters, and police officers pensions. They just sucked all the cash out of it. And the teachers are going, what happened to us? But because they don't know anything, it's red for it. They're out there protesting in mass all over the United States. But you don't hear about it. They talk about the yellow jackets. They don't talk about red for it. So this whole thing is coming apart right now. And it goes back to the question I have, I have always asked, why doesn't our school teach us about money? Because Wall Street won't let them. That's simple. That's simple. And so if someone's listening to us that's stuck in that poor middle-class trap and they hear it's their fear that ultimately is keeping them from that, that's a hard thing to hear, Robert. Well, every time I, you know, I do a lot of speaking to the masses out there, you know, Lehman doesn't invite me in because we're gone, but what, you know, it's so risky. What you're saying is risky. And I said, what I do isn't risky for me, but it's risky for you. And when somebody says, what is risk? You have to look in the mirror. Do you know what I mean? For me to fly in Vietnam, that was high risk, but the higher the risk, the more you have to study. You know that, I know that. So if you're not gonna study, you're not gonna practice and all that, then you should do what Wall Street tells you to do. Buy, you know, 401ks, mutual funds, ETFs and all that. But that, that's where they're fake assets because they only make Wall Street or the city of London rich. Just watch where the cash is flowing. Follow the money. It's not making the poor middle class rich. You know, all Wall Street in America has done is rip off the pensions, because you know pensions are the biggest pool of money in America. And states like Kentucky, New Jersey, Illinois, California, Hawaii are going bankrupt because Wall Street went in and just sucked all the cash out of their pensions. So the school teachers like my dad, the firefighters and police officers, they have no retirement now. And so that's why it's fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. They're the same system. You see, in 71, that's, that's where fake starts. My rich dad sent me a letter, I was stationed on an aircraft carrier off Vietnam. And it says, hey, did you know that Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard? And we didn't know. We're not in the banking industry. And he says, watch out, the world's gonna change. So by the time I got the letter, it was 72. My co-pilot and I said, well, what does gold and gold standard mean, but we didn't know. Americans were, was illegal for Americans to own gold in 72. Imagine that. Wow. That's how powerful gold was. And, I said, and the more I researched it, the more I found out. So my co-pilot and I, the, the way the book starts, fake starts, we fly behind enemy lines to go look for gold. We went to look for gold and we're standing in front of this little Vietnamese woman who's the, the broker for the, the gold company and she's selling this little cubes, nuggets of gold. And, and, you know, gold was 35 an ounce. It was now pushing 50 an ounce. So I figured, well, she's behind enemy lines. We're behind enemy lines. I can negotiate a deal. And she's a little tiny woman, little red teeth, because they chew beetle nuts all day long. And I go, I'll give you well, $40. And she goes, ha, <laughs> So what's she laughing about? <laughs> We're behind enemy lines. I got US dollars. She goes, ha, <laughs> And then I realized she knew more about money than I did. I don't think she went to Harvard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? She knew that this was worthless. The gold was worth more than my dollars. And that's where the fake money comes to. So even she knew with very little education behind enemy lines that the gold was a real asset. It's called spot, right? Right, spot price, yeah. as they know. All over the world, guess what? Same price, right? Yeah, it's the same price. Behind enemy lines, same price. So in 71, it was the US, not anybody else basically screwed the world economy. So rather than fix the economy, they just did this. So things were fine, they fixed the economy, you know, inflation went through the roof, there's a dollar sign on it, and like this. So 87, there was, you know, the real estate, everything's getting expensive, inflation's going crazy, in the 80s. Right. 87 crash, big crash, did anything happen? No, nothing happened, they just. <laughs> so 87, it went like this, and there was the LTCM plus the Southeast Asian crash, the Rapia crash and all this. Yeah, in the end of the 90s. So what did Greenspan do? It was the Greenspan put, right? He says, oh, don't worry. We'll give the banks all the money they want so you won't crash. So the banks and Treasury and the central bank, the Fed and Bank of England, they're like keeping this thing on. So everything's inflated now. 
They're pushing money into the system to prop it up every time. Fake money. Fake money. This is fake money right. going in. So then in 2000, the dot-com crash hits. It goes So Greenspan kind of panics and he says, oh my God, we better keep this thing going because that was a pretty big pop, you know? Yeah, that was there. So 2008, that's when everybody was into derivatives and, you know, pumping this baby up. And it did nearly come down. We had some Lehman came down and Bear Stearns was wiped out. And it was like this. So what did uh, Bernanke and those guys do? More. So after 2008, they just kept pumping it. And it's getting worse. So now we have the stock market, this one area of the economy, all-time highs, floating on fake money. Real estate, I mean, I don't know how people can afford to live. You know, in, in New York, I was looking at a condo for 55 million. You know, real estate in Silicon Valley, you, you can't afford to live there. And then all these companies started borrowing money, so the, so the economy's good, and, you know, unemployment's low and all this. They say there's no inflation, but have you seen the price of food, real estate, and student loans, and medical? It's a bubble, you know? So now what's going to happen is the baby boomers, my generation, are going to start to retire. There's no money there. Social Security is broke. Pensions are broke. Uh, student, the students are broke. You know, we, they're screwing everybody with debt. This is called, not economics, this is called bubble-nomics. But they'll never teach you this in school. You know, this is like heroin. The moment you take that one hit, they say, okay, I'll quit next week. And the economy gets worse, so they keep going. Trump gave us a tax cut in America. This thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So what happened in 2008, they stopped it by printing money. So we, they call it the Great Recession. But they didn't really fix anything. You know, derivatives went from 700 trillion to 1.2 trillion today. Twice as much. So when the recession hit, the PhD standard came in, that was Bernanke, you know, and then Yellen. The PhD said, they have PhDs. Well, it's no different than long-term capital, LTCM. They had Nobel Prize winners, people like my poor dad, academics, you know. So anyway, this is what's going on in the world economy today. So the baby boomers are gonna retire now. Student loans are bust. So do you have to be an economist to say what's gonna happen? Because they, this, we're fighting a 12-year war now. Entitlements are going through the roof. National debt to GDP is 109, 109%. 90% is too late. We have to keep printing now. So this is called bubblenomics, and this is what's going to happen. <laughs> Scary stuff. It's happened throughout history. And what can we do about it? What can we do as the people watching here? What can they do with their money, with their brain? And what's gonna happen with this crashes? I mean, this is kind of blood on the streets type stuff. I mean, we've never seen anything like this. Here I am, I'm, I'm Mr. and Mrs. America or England or France. It doesn't make any difference. You save all this money and it goes poof. So it sits there right now and the world teeters. Japan is almost gone. I think they're 220% debt to GDP. Yeah. China is in horrible shape. You look at what's happening in Spain, Italy, Greece, what's going on in Venezuela, Brazil, Argentina. You know, the world is teetering right now, and it all goes back to 1971, when I was flying behind enemy lines looking for gold. So I decided that I'm gonna put myself on the gold standard. That's what Rickard says to do. Just put yourself on the gold standard. <laughs> so we buy real gold, not ETFs, that's fake gold. So my wife and I have been buying gold since, since well, I don't know when. Because this is all saying, do you build your house on sand or do you build it on rock? So do you build your, do you build your house on cash or do you, buy, do you build it on gold coins? So we kept just saving gold coins. We didn't have much money, we kept, you know. And as we got richer and richer and richer, we had more and more gold coins and our, and our foundation got stronger. But think of this. It was $290 in 1999. Hmm. And today it's 1300. So never say, I can't afford it. Ask yourself, how can I? The reason I have so much money is because 
I don't say I can't do it. I just go, how can I do it? And I just go and do it. So I make a lot of mistakes, but that's how I learn. How can I? The poorest, the poor people like my poor dad always said I can't afford it. You think I'm made of money? I'm a school teacher. I can't do that. And I picked that up. And my rich dad never said those words. So when I meet poor people, they use the words I can't a lot. So the people that say I can't afford it, I can't do this, I can't get to college, the rich are evil, you know, I choose not to participate in that. And that's one thing people could change today. Correct. Right now is that dialogue in their head. Stop saying the word can't. I can't. Right. So how can I? How can I? Especially as in I can't afford it. How can I afford that? Right. Because that opens them up to looking at it as an investment to a greater future. Right. So everybody can do something. You can buy silver for two bucks. You can buy U.S. dime for two bucks. Right. Go real as fast as you can. Don't have to do that much. But that's what that's what I that's what records does. What I do. We're going real because the rest is fake. Okay. That's what records does too. Right. And that's I own real estate, land, gold, and he recommends uh, museum quality artwork. So you want people to understand what's fake and what's real. Correct. To get into the real assets because that's the way to protect from the next crash. And our schools will never teach us this. Right. Never. And, and, and Wall Street won't either. They make too much money. They don't get money off of. They don't make money off of gold, they or real estate, right. or Bitcoin. 1929 crash was this big, 2008 was that big, and the next one's gonna be that big. That's that 